Okay, so now we're ready to add the secondary uh, coil onto here. I just want to show you that I've drilled uh, two small holes um, going in horizontally into the bottom plate of this coil. And I've done that so that I can uh, mount reed switches into there, like so. Um, this is aluminum wire so it doesn't mess with the magnetic field at all. But yeah, anyway, that's what those are for. I also have um, two small outer holes here for the secondary winding. All of that's uh, in place. So basically what I do here is I want to add a layer of cotton between the primary windings and the secondary windings. So I'm just going to um, start by bringing this around just like so. I'm going to use a black electrical tape on the uh, plate portion. I do have a reason that I'm leaving the uh, cotton coming up all the way over the plates. And that's so that moisture can get into the inner primary coil windings if you need to wet this down again. Um, and the, it'll travel up through this exposed cotton uh, through capillary action and then down into the primary part of the coil. If you were to just wrap the primary or the secondary coil straight onto the primary and not put down this cotton and not leave it overhanging like this, um, it would be a lot harder to uh, moisten your coil. it on here a lot too upset to be good okay just like that okay now I'm going to take mas masking tape and I'm going to uh, tape this center section down tight or the, uh, the cotton that's on the primary part of the coil that'll give us a nice nice uh, smooth area to start our secondary windings on and I'm also doing this uh, so that we can get up into the edges nice and tight here. Now the reason I'm using masking tape on this portion is uh, just, I don't know, I think that it it might allow the moisture to travel easier. I use the uh, black electrical tape also so that if you were to bury this in the ground, you know, it's, it's a lot more durable. And I think on one of those double field quills I made, I actually used masking tape um, to hold the outer uh, edges down as well. That works, but you know, it fell off with time, and I just think that the black electrical tape will be a more permanent uh, solution. All right, we're almost ready for our primary, uh, I mean, our secondary windings. This coil is almost done. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut off the uh, excess cotton here. Alright, so, okay, now we're ready to uh, start winding on our secondary. So, and this coil is almost done. It's getting pretty exciting. So I'm going to leave some extra wire sticking out here because we'll need to um, scrape the enamel off this and uh, get it down in position. Now this first, uh, this first wrap, I like to pull it tight and come around and I like to overlap it just um, so it doesn't try to slide out up here. I believe this is 22 gauge enamel uh, copper wire. It may be uh, even smaller than that. I don't remember right off. So, I'm starting the winds, uh, just like on the uh, primary, we keep them close to each other, nice and tight. We don't want any loose uh, 
loose winds going on. So if you thought you had to do a lot of winds on the uh, primary, now you're really in for a surprise. I'm going to uh, wind this until it's out flush with the uh, edges of our end plates. So I'll turn the camera back on here in a bit as I come down to this side. Okay, I'm progressing along here. I just thought I'd point out um, there are some separation areas and that's because of the irregularities um, of the primary coil under the secondary. On, uh, don't worry about that too much um, because on the next uh, layer across you can help fill in some of those and then each time you just keep um, smoothing it out. Some areas will be a little uh, tighter and some areas will be a little wider and you can also through creative uh, winding kind of smooth all those out so that hopefully by the time we come out to here we have uh, fairly straight smooth edges. So I've got the first uh, layer of the secondary wound onto here. So I'm going to start uh, winding my way back the other way, back to this side now. And I will uh, do that back and forth, back and forth until I'm dizzy and very tired of winding <laughs> this wire. I know I could make a, uh, a little machine to do this for me at a much faster rate, but there's something special about a uh, hand uh, wound coil. It's pretty satisfying to, uh, to have wound the whole coil yourself by hand. So anyway, I will uh, turn the camera off for now. I'll turn on later. Alright guys, I'm here winding this coil still and I've got my buddy here on the uh, telephone and speakerphone and it really helps the, uh, the time pass by. So Scott, what, what was that river trip like uh, that you were telling me about? Uh, it was uh, perfect flow that was flowed at about 4,500 feet per second down the river. So, so would it have been useful? Hey, would it have been useful to have a stubble field coil along in that river trip to put in the sand on the river bank and have a basic LED lighting and stuff at night? Yeah, it's got enough power to power up the LED. Okay, now that we've got the secondary wrapped on here, we will uh, feed the other end of the secondary wire up through this hole that we had prepared earlier. And to uh, keep it from unraveling, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, hot glue on it right here where it goes in. And then I'll just uh, pull it tight. Alright. I'm just going to strip the enamel off these ends and uh, we'll test this. So now I've connected uh, two wires to the uh, terminals of the secondary. You'll have to play with the LED to find the correct uh, polarity. So I'm going to short my outer iron wire to my inner copper wire. And uh, when I do a make and break uh, switching on this wire, we do get light on the LED. So we have success. Now I'll just hook up my little uh, make and break switch uh, motor and we'll let this run. All right, we've got this uh, project all done. This stubble field coil is now complete. So I've got the uh, outer copper to the inner wire connected to my reed switch. I've got my LED connected to the uh, two wires coming off our secondary. Let's bring this uh, make and break switch motor into position. You can see that as it closes that read switch, the LED flashes. So I'm just going to line it up here. Now I haven't tuned this at all. Um, I usually tune my read switch position and my motor to get the maximum uh, speed. You can see it's picking up speed very nicely. The LED is getting uh, brighter and brighter. Look at that. So, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys do some uh, replications of this. Oh, uh, look at that go. It's pretty cool to have a, uh, a continuously running uh, motor plus super bright LED light coming off a stubble fuel coil.
this is going to change the way that people have nights. Solar bulb is a cheap way of allowing uh, light to go through your roof. Uh, by putting this on the roof, it goes through the bottle. The water serves as a thick lens and it enters and once water hits water it refracts so it goes 360 degrees so it lights up a whole 35 square meter uh, room in a very big way that's 55 watts of free electricity so what you save during the day you can use for books for school transforming society as we know it and if you can improve a life of a family even in the smallest way but make Cumulatively, many, many people be able to benefit from this. You change a whole new generation. They can read, their better nutrition. And the same thing is, you don't have to spend money where it's not necessary. And that's the gift of the solar bulb.